Welcome back to Engineering Acoustics. Hi, this is Professor Ryan Harn. Wherever we go, there is background noise in rooms. In this video, we'll learn about a noise level metric that helps us characterize room usability for one or another purpose according to the background noise. So let's get started. Before we dive in, we should recognize an important contributor to acoustics around the world, including for the noise criterion that we'll learn about in this video. Dr. Leo Branick was the most widely recognized expert in acoustics in the world. He passed away in 2016 at the age of 102. Starting as a farm boy, he became fascinated with the engineering of speakers and radio systems, moving ultimately to a college in Iowa. He later taught acoustic engineering at Harvard and MIT after World War II and, of course, after earning his Ph.D. degree. He later founded Bolt, Moranek, and Newman in the late 1940s. Although BBN was well known for many efforts in acoustics, they're also known to develop the first computer-based network with DARPA funds in 1969, which was the precursor to the modern internet. Among BBN's credits, they designed the acoustics for facilities ranging from the United Nations General Assembly Hall, the Lincoln Center Philharmonic, and many more. But Leo Baranek also had a passion for enhancing day-to-day well-being of people, according to the acoustics of their environment. He wanted to establish criteria for sound levels that are appropriate for the distinct listening spaces. And after World War II, acoustics inside spaces changed with the advent of air conditioning and the introduction of other mechanical equipment. So the noise criterion was born in 1957 under the guidance of Dr. Baranek, and this classifies how the background room noise from utilities creates appropriate use of the space. The NC was standardized in the ANSI S12.12. .12. It describes the latest rating system for the noise criterion, NC. The SPL in decibels in a room is recorded and compared against the tabulated or plotted NC ratings. We see the ratings as shown here on the right. We calculate the NC of a room by measuring the octave band SPLs in decibels. The room must be unoccupied, and the microphone should be placed away from reflective surfaces at around a sitting or standing height. The speech interference level is first computed. We then determine the NC of the room by one of two ways. First, we'll use a speech interference level method we find the NC-SIL rating from the table or plot. If there are no measured SPL readings that exceed the NC-SIL rating, then the NC rating of the room is equal to the SIL value. Now, if some of the SPL readings do exceed the NC-SIL, then we use the tangency method. The SPL is plotted over the NC curves the highest NC curve that the SPL exceeds is identified, and then we interpolate over that exceeded amount to compute the NC of the room. An example of computing the NC of a room is needed to understand how to do this in practice. Two representative room SPL spectra are shown in the NC curve plot here. One curve is shown in red, and the other is shown in blue, along with our NC curves. Both require the use of the tangency method, since their SPL values exceed the respective SILs. We then compute the highest deviation for each curve. For instance, the curve of data in red exceeds the NC55 curve, and it exceeds it at most right here. We then interpolate from the NC curve 55 to the NC60, and we determine that this is going to be rated as NC56, since it exceeds it by about one decibel over the 55 rating. Now, for the blue data, we see that the highest excess is occurring for NC35, and it seems to occur at around two places, here and here, by around the same value of two decibels. So we add two decibels to 35, so the NC rating for that room is NC37. Background noise mostly consists of HVAC, or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning noise, or other utility noise. 
Mechanical and transportation noise in the room mostly controls the low frequency portions of the NC curves, whereas the higher frequencies in the NC curves are largely influenced by electrical noise, for instance, electrical transformers. So if we consider the relationship between NCs of a room and recommended use, we find for rooms where high privacy and clear speech is needed, very low NC values are recommended. NC values below 40 are considered quiet, while values of NC above 60 and approaching 60 indicate that it's more of an industrial or heavy commercial space that might actually be close to air handling units and is not generally advisable for day-to-day -day use. To summarize what we've learned, we've learned that interior noise affects the ease of communication and it creates an anticipated end use of the space. The noise criterion or the NC rating system determines the appropriateness of treatments that are designed to stop transfer of utility noise into the room. And together, the NC and the speech interference level, SIL, together determine the use of the space. The NC characterizes the unoccupied utility noise, whereas the SIL assesses the background noise that's due to the occupation of the space. That's it for this video. Now that we know all about sound level metrics used to characterize the quality of interior acoustics, in the next video we'll learn how to design acoustic walls and interiors to help meet these metrics.